Yo, you're watching your Screaming Fish here, people, and once again, I'm here for you guys with yet another video. And this time, we are going to be taking a look at the film Ghost in the Shell, directed by Rupert Sanders and stars Scarlett Johansson as Major. I'm, that, that's basically the only name she has in this movie, for the most part, anyway. She's just called the Major. Yeah. I mean, she has another name, but for the most part, she's just called the Major. Yeah. Anywho, so um, yeah, this is a movie I've been I've been pretty excited for since I saw the trailers. I will admit I have not seen the original anime, but I do hear really good things about it. So I was really excited for this part, partly because of that, and also the trailers for this movie. Say what you will, were amazing. Uh, the, the trailers just blew blew me away. So yeah, to sum it up, slightly shorter than well that. Uh, I was really excited for this movie. So, without further ado, let's get into my review of Ghost in the Shell. So, like I have already told you, I have not seen the original anime that this movie is based on. However, I do have some knowledge of the mythology of the Ghost in the Shell universe, so I didn't go into this movie knowing completely nothing about this. So, I went into this movie both optimistic and skeptical. On one hand, the trailers for this movie were absolutely amazing, and I personally think Scarlett Johansson is perfect for this role. I don't care if people say it's whitewashing, as long as the performance is good, I'm all for it. But at the same time, most live-action movies based on anime tend to be pretty divisive, and the trailers, as awesome as I thought they were, had already received lots of hate from fans and general moviegoers. But now the movie's out, is it divisive? Yeah, it is. It really is. A lot of people have said that ScarJo is great in this movie and the visuals are insane, but they have also said that it comes nowhere close to living up to the classic source material It's that the movie is based on. However, one, I haven't seen the original anime, and two, this movie is not about what other people think. This is about what I think. So did I like this movie? Yeah, ish. I mean, I had fun with the movie at least, but at the same time, there are so many things in this movie that I personally think could have been 10 times better than they were. So, without further ado, let's get into those. First off, the characters, who for me were very hit or miss. Scarlett Johansson gave by far the best performance in this movie. There was always this sense of vulnerability to her character that made her all the more compelling, and I just genuinely liked the major as a character. I really liked Pillow Acebic as Bato, the performance was great and overall I found Bato to be a really interesting character, although I do wish he had more screen time. really liked Michael Pitt in this movie, he was fantastic as the main villain, Kuze. Every time he was on screen he gave me the chills and he was for the most part this scary menacing presence throughout the movie. But he also makes for one of the movie's most compelling characters because while this guy is creepy as heck, you can't help but feel sympathy for this guy as you learn more about his backstory. Unfortunately, none of that can be said for the rest of the characters in this movie. Takashi Kitano is a badass in this movie, and that's basically all there is to this character. He gets basically nothing in terms of backstory other than the fact that he works with the Major in Sector 9. Juliette Benoche, apologies if I pronounced that wrong, but Dr. Ulette, who is the character she plays, was good performance-wise, but for the most part her character came off as your typical generic scientist who is worried for the Major's safety, and that is about it. And the rest of the characters that work with Bato and Major are not even given any development aside from a few lines of dialogue and one or two action sequences. And some of them come off as a bit of a cliché, and that's another problem with this movie. This movie, in my opinion, came out at a very, very bad time. If this movie had come out before movies like The Matrix, for example, then this would be considered revolutionary, but now when I watch this movie, there are a lot of elements present in this movie that have already been done in the same way in so many other movies that came before it. For example, the slow motion shots come off as someone clearly trying to copy The Matrix, the main story of this movie is that the Major is trying to find out who she was before she became the Major, and the way that is explored as the movie progresses feels like a Jason Bourne rehash, and the plot of this movie itself can get unnecessarily convoluted at times, and therein lies my biggest problem with this movie, the pacing. This movie tries to be a really fast-paced action thriller that almost never stops to catch a breather. Because of this, the movie becomes very convoluted with its storytelling. For example, there's this one character who just so happens to have all these technological abilities, but it's never explained how or where he got these abilities. And then there's other things like how the Major, who is a really enhanced cyborg, 
can still get hurt, and yet a much more less advanced cyborg than her can take a bullet and not get hurt at all. There are also a couple of scenes in this movie that to me were just in the movie for visual eye candy, and a few others that just come off as pretty weird and a little uncomfortable. For example, there is a scene where the Major is trying to find out what a human feels when they are touched by a cyborg, or enhanced human, or whatever you want to call it. At first I thought it would be interesting, but the way that scene is executed just comes off as a little weird and, as much as I hate to say it, a little uncomfortable. Speaking of the visuals though, love or hate this movie, there's absolutely no denying that this movie is beautiful to look at. The effects in this movie are virtually flawless. Every CG animation in this movie just blew my mind. This futuristic world that this movie takes place in is so well realised and even the way this movie is shot is just draw dropping. Pretty much all the long and extensive shots of this futuristic Tokyo took my breath away. Even the slow motion shots in this movie, even though you get way too much of a Matrix vibe from them, they are shot really well. If anyone deserves praise here, it's the visual effects team because the time and effort that must have gone into rendering these effects is ridiculous, but it is definitely worth it. I also loved the score of this movie, it is very metallic and whimsical and it immerses you into this world even further. And that's probably the biggest praise I can give this film. The world this movie is set in is really well fleshed out and it feels like an actual world to me now. As for the action, well, it's fine, but I'm going to be honest here, I was pretty disappointed at how the action was executed. Don't get me wrong, the action in this movie is still pretty enjoyable to an extent, but the trailers for this movie made it out to be something like we've never seen before, but in reality, most of the action sequences are as conventional as you can get. Yeah, they do have the occasional amazing shot here and there, but for the most part, they are shot, choreographed, and executed in a very conventional and surprisingly sanitized way. Whenever ScarJo would shoot something organic, it would just cut away as soon as she pulled the trigger. The primary audience for the anime in Britain, anyway, can't even watch the anime unless they're 15 or over. And the fact that this movie took a really sanitized route with its action, I really have to say, really disappointed me. The first two acts of the film for me were decent, but I was never truly hooked into the story, which was mainly due to bad pacing, which made the film feel a little convoluted at times. But despite my problems with the pacing being too fast, I will admit the movie was moving fast enough for me to actually be entertained by this. So at the very least, I was never bored, but at the same time, it's because of that that the movie never stops to give the characters more development or to expand the story enough to understand it all. The third act, though, was really the part of the movie where I felt it had become something more than a generic sci-fi blockbuster. There was a really compelling scene about the Major's past that I really enjoyed. The dynamic between the mate, the Major, and Kuze was much more stronger, and I also found a lot of the action in the third act to be pretty good and quite thrilling. What I'm trying to say here is that the third act of this movie is the closest we actually get to a great movie, and while it's good that the film ends on a high note, it's just a shame that the two acts that came before it were a bit underwhelming. Despite all my problems with this movie, I didn't hate this. It is definitely a pretty entertaining watch, but the third act of this movie is definitely the only part where I felt I was getting my money's worth, as the two acts preceding it go from fast-paced and entertaining to convoluted and underwhelming. I think overall, while it did, at the very least, entertain me, I did leave the theatre underwhelmed by the movie, partly because it has so much potential to be amazing, but unfortunately, it falls flat in a lot of areas. If you're looking for a sci-fi movie with a compelling plot and unbelievable action, then you're better off saving your money and waiting for Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 2 to be released. At the end of the day, my biggest complaint with this movie, besides the pacing, is that absolutely nothing in this movie surprised me. And this is coming from someone who hasn't even seen the original anime that this movie is based on. This movie was just incredibly predictable from start to finish, but considering this movie was directed by Rupert Sanders who brought us Snow White and the Hudsman, that doesn't surprise me either. So guys, those were my thoughts on Ghost in the Shell. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Did you think it was okay? Did you think it was good? Did you think it was bad? Personally, I thought it was entertaining, at least, but it should have been 10 times better in my opinion, so yeah, definitely entertaining, should have been a hell of a lot better. So uh, yeah, please don't forget to like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I will indeed see you guys in the next one. So uh, yeah, this is part where I say goodbye, uh, hmm. yeah, so uh, don't forget to like, and uh,
yeah, just, um, yeah, just don't forget to, just don't forget to like, yeah, I'm just, uh, just make this insanely awkward, haven't I? Uh, hmm. You know what? Just, just talk to the Vader. Just talk, just, just talk to the Vader. Just talk to the Vader. You know, because, I mean, don't judge me, I'm just gonna chill with my Vader. You know, just chilling with Vader. Mm -hmm. Greatest movie villain of all time. Don't fall strangle, don't fall strangle me now. Yep. Don't scream no. This is like the most interesting thing I can come up with to make this outro remotely interesting. Uh, yeah. Jenna with my Vader. Jenna with my Vader. Jenna with my Vader. Jenna with my Vader.